Okay, last week on the lumbar spine course, I was going through deadlifts with the physios, and I'm gonna give you the same tricks that I gave them to help clients get the deadlift pattern right. Now, this is for people who are not very good at deadlift. We need to try and get them doing hip hinging to try and get their posterior chain stronger, more active to help them with injury prevention, help their back get stronger. So if you're one of those people who are at the stage where you're out of the pain pretty much and you're getting stronger with your core strength and exercises and you need to move into things like lifting or deadlifting and maybe you haven't done it before, maybe a physio has got you doing it and your technique's not quite right, here's a trick for you. So when people do deadlifts, they have to hinge at the hip, and they have to be stable, they have to do not, not hardly any knee bending going forward, you don't want to drop your bum down, it's simply going backwards. Now, people sort of are not very aware sometimes of where their hips are, especially when they're going behind them, so I get them to use a wall. Now, not a mirror, but a wall. Now, initially, not even using the band, so I get them pretty close to the wall. So when they do a deadlift, it's simply bang, they hit the wall, okay? So they've got that very small movement. So you get an opportunity to go through just some part of the movement and get that component right. And as you get better, you go through more and more and more of the movement. So it's like initially just starting off with, can we just hip hinge from there to here? Okay, so they don't have to go through too much range. They don't have to think about too much of the movement to get right. They're just getting one part right, the initial part right. And that's, hey, that's the most important part. So after you've got them strengthening through there, or if you're a client or a patient that needs to work on this, you tighten through here and you bend to the hips. So I give them a cue where you're going shoulders forward, hands down, bum to the wall. Now at that point, they need to monitor, is your back flat? Have you overarched it or have you rounded it? So if they can get the connection of shoulders forward, hands down, bum back, then they need to worry about, okay, where is my lumbar spine in that part of that movement? And if you can get that initial part right, that's the most important part, then you can move on. So learning where that neutral spine is in that movement and just practicing from there to there, trying to get it right, practice, 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 practice. Once that movement pattern is correct, meaning they do the right things with the shoulders, the right things with their hands, the right things with their knees, and the right things with their lower back, then they can progress further into it. And all you need to do is simply step forward an inch or two, and now you're further away from the wall. So when you go down, you've got more range before you hit. Again, you can do the same thing. Have I overcooked it? Have I gone into extension? Have I undercooked it? Have I gone into flexion? Do I need to find that neutral spine again? And then when I come up, am I doing the right things all the way through that movement? Am I making sure that I don't go and arch my back and come through? And am I closing the knee and the hip at the same time? So these are all the things we talked about in the course and got them moving from very close to the wall to further and further away. You get to the point where you move further and further away and it's a long way down to the wall. Okay, it's almost there and they feel like they're gonna fall backwards. So you need to get the right amount of just enough so when they get below their knees, they're sort of touching the wall, then they can feel on their hamstrings, they can know their back's flat and they can work. And you can progress it inch by inch by inch if you like. You don't have to go and jump too many steps. So for this one, once they get to that position where they are away from the wall, and even close to that, you can add on some resistance. Now some people need the resistance just to feel like they're connected to the floor. So if you're gonna do that, maybe just use a band for that one. And like I said, with all the deadlift type movements that I progress, I progress them with bands usually before a weight. It's a little bit kinder, but you just have to make sure you get down low and grab that band. And then from that position, then you can work out, you know, where am I from the wall? And then go down, use that wall as a guide again, and coming back up. And it might just give them some little connection to the ground, which gives them that resistance and a bit of biofeedback and a bit of muscle feedback to know where to be in that position and also gives them a bit of a connection going on there. So give that a try. If you're struggling with your hip hinge movement, positioning, moving into a deadlift, start off the wall and just go slowly further and further out, the better you get, I'm sure it'll help.